from our last tale. Did you sleep all right? You look a little tired. I I was just so excited to get back to my armor. I slept in my armor last night. Wasn't the greatest decision. My friend uh, Snow here said that there's something someone can do to make me not tired. Warmth sort of wash over you from your hand up your arm, sort of across your whole body. How do you feel? And the level of exhaustion is lifted. One of my parents who traveled, traveled in areas that were terribly close to Burns of Dark, and I was with that parent. I saw a place and it looked, something happened there. I don't know what happened there, but I realize it's where she is. It's Vandela. But they didn't see any entrance to any dark temple. It's gone. <laughs> I certainly hope not. So you want us to Tell go us there again. and walk around a little bit? Well, I do. I want you to accompany me. All right. Let's go. Uh, then I'll meet you at the gate. Yes. Perfect. You guys head out. You head back. To, so you're heading back to the Peace District to check your mailboxes first. Okay. A long mail trip. <laughs> very. It's a very long mail trip. You go back to your mailboxes and... Viola. Hers is the Viola only mailbox that is glowing. Rinse over and rips <laughs> open the mailbox. You do, and you find a small coin purse in there with a, a very official looking notice that explains compensation for the wagon, for cart upgrades, and contributions to the strength of the guardianship and you find 10 gold pieces for your contributions to the guardianship. And so you can add that to your Like gold. a reimbursement? Yeah, but that is what you find. The other mailboxes are empty. She'll put that in with the rest of her money. Time to go meet with Nora. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. As we walk, Snow is going to attempt to keep an eye out for Vaughn. So how did you all okay. spend your morning? Give me a perception check, Snow. Big six. No sightings yet, but you're keeping an eye out. <laughs> How did we spend our mornings? Yeah. Apparently slept in a little later than you. And then Viola checked on Buttercup. I also oh, met up with Lear, and we had the most wonderful conversation. I see. So and much. I saw that polar bear again last night. Okay. Oh. <laughs> he was in Is there not... more to the story? No, I was too worried about my armor, so I went straight to my room to check on my armor. I didn't go in and talk to him, but I've made a note of okay. where he is at that point in time during the day, and I intend to look the next time we come back. So learn that sleeping in armor is not something as easy as it might seem. I did yeah. also learn that. We'll not be doing that more in the future. <laughs> so why are you still in the armor then? Don't you have like a workaround for it now? Well, this armor is better. <laughs> oh, I need to take that stuff back to the to the place. Nonsense. They don't know we're <laughs> back yet. You can return it. It'll be fine. We can okay. return it. Don't later. let me forget that. because I promised Gary that I wouldn't steal it. I can't forget. Yeah, we wouldn't but... want to steal from Gary's family. <laughs> you are asking the wrong people to remind you. Well, technically it belongs to the guardianship, I would think, but... I mean, as long as we're here, it's not stealing because you haven't gone anywhere with it, you know? That is true. The Minthral armor's in my room now. Oh, hmm. then it's fine. Let's go. But I still have the night vision goggles. Excellent. Well, good. It was dark down there. All right, Here so I guess we're... light a coin. Do you need light? Stan sort of calls down. I, I do. I can't see anything. It's dark down here. I don't know how they can see, but I can't. It's a part of magic. Stan will take a small coin out of her pocket, cast light on it, and drop it down to Viola. Viola's <laughs> gonna catch it. Viola's currently trying to find a way to, like, hook the coin into herself somewhere so that she can still have the light but not have to hold it. Oh my goodness, you should put it on your forehead in the wreath. It would be like this. It would be like yes. the helmet. Like the headlamps! 
<laughs> okay. That's, yeah, that's what she's gonna do. I okay. will tie it and get it fixed in place for her. Thank you. The coin's still in <laughs> Viola's crown, it's just not in my crown because I haven't found it in my house yet. Anything else y'all are doing while you're in the Peace District? No. So you guys head back to the Rising Gate. Give me a perception check, everyone. Ooh, nat 20. Ooh. 15. 30. 7. You guys are, you guys head back to the Rising Gate. Bo, you have this, you spot where Nora is. For a moment, it you're uh, unsure because her hair is this pitch black <laughs> and not the gray white that you've come to know. And you spot her sitting She's sitting just outside the door of the uh, stables, kind of leaning back. Her head is kind of tilted a little bit, sort of lazily as she's looking inside. Sazian is actually there, not looking her in the eye, of course. They appear to be having a very brief conversation, if you could even call it that. And you just have this, this moment. It's just this brief flash of a moment. It could be an entirely disconnected just the vision this, this it's like a deja vu moment and it's makes your heart race just a split second just this vision of a woman kind of leaned back and not entirely comfortable almost helpless looking for a moment before it's gone just this flash um, but your heart's racing just a little bit but you do spot her brief conversation with Sazian, and you sort of get the gist with the nat 20. Uh, you sort of get the gist of appears to be motions, almost like throwing motions as part of the conversation. Sayin, you spot her as well, despite now having this dark hair pulled back. And you also, uh, as you're approaching, maybe they don't notice immediately, but as you're approaching, you can hear just little flickers of the conversation, something about targets and something about practicing improving as you approach but she does take note of you soon smiles in your direction stands all right have you handled everything oh i'm sorry should i change how i speak too for this new persona of course you're a pirate all right it's been a minute all right shall we head out then uh mateys, mateys. yes that's that's the one Shall we head out? <laughs> Is that how it sounds? <laughs> of course, Gortrude. Let's go. <laughs> really? <laughs> Did you <talk> about me <laughs> I'm gonna just run in and say hi to Buttercup cup real quick, and I'm Viola going just with you runs it's in. Be a very I'm, cool I'm just gonna pet her and say hello and come right back out. Why don't we just bring Buttercup? <laughs> no, Buttercup should stay here. I don't want to put her in any more danger. Butter. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Viola just runs in, gives her a little pez, scratch behind the ear, and says hello, and then they go back out. I'm out. <laughs> Give me an intelligence check with advantage, because Stayin is attempting to guide you this time. <laughs> Bo, do you want to make a bet on how long she is this time? That's a dirty 20. How long was she last time? It was at least an hour. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I feel like Stayin wouldn't let it go past, like... Three minutes. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> three goals was... for three minutes. <laughs> You're thinking it's going to be lower or higher? Longer. Okay. Three gold, huh? And that was a dirty 20? <laughs> mm -hmm. Viola goes in. Uh, Stain is right behind her. And almost as if it's waiting for you, on this little nail in the wood of the pen is this little baggie, and you can see a few more carrot sticks <laughs> waiting for you. With and, and there's like a little... Like, your name is, like, pinned to this thing. You go in with Stan guiding you. Buttercup's already waiting for you. Gives a quick, give a quick pet. Feed her quickly. And you're right back out. It takes you less than two minutes to go in and out. <laughs> it's your quickest one. You're not super happy, but you do get to, like, ruffle her up a little bit. Head on out. Less than two minutes. Aha! Thank you, Stan! <laughs> <laughs> Snow is going to give him two gold and then he's going to try and see if he can use press a digitation to for the third one because you can make a little non-magical trinket it only lasts for 12 seconds but 
Snow's thinking is like if he puts it in his bag, if he just immediately puts it in his coin purse, then he's it's going to be too fast and he won't notice. Snow has never tried this before, but he is so curious to see if it works. <laughs> okay, let me see. Bo, what's your passive perception? Passive perception is a 13. Okay, so while you're casting this to, to make this appear, I will need a sleight of hand check. See if you can get that coin. Yeah, I that was is dirty 20. Just... Okay. Yeah, three coins <laughs> it is in your, in your purse. <laughs> Well, if, well, here's the catch. So Bo would have to have the coin purse ready, right? I know he keeps it tucked away. Is that all right? Like he's expecting coins, so he's going to take his yeah, coin purse I, out I mean, and get ready for coins? Yeah. Okay. Like he'd probably be grabbing in. it, grabbing it while he's putting out his hand for the coins. And I would just put okay. them in. Yep. And three coins go in. Um, also, Snow, if in case that changes anything, can you also subtract one, as we had discussed before? This time it's a one. Okay. Oh, somebody is just trailing us taking money. <laughs> what is this? Tamar, what are you doing? <laughs> it's Aglin. It's Aglin. You got me. He solved the mystery. I wouldn't put it past Dang. him. <laughs> that guy's a jerk. All I'm saying he is, wants donations. Bo is definitely not like, <laughs> like I'm not messaging Brad being like, he's takes some more. <laughs> <laughs> Coin goes in. Coins go in. We're we're having a good time. With that all set up, you guys have a sturdier, I suppose, carriage ready. That's not just for towns, but for movement. And you know what? They'll let they'll let you keep Cherry if you want. Cherry can handle it. She's ready for a big girl mission. Do we As... want Cherry though? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? If they get Cherry again, Viola will this time like go and like spend some time talking to her and like petting her before she gets on to like ride just to familiarize herself better. So hopefully it's <laughs> better. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How much time do you want to take for that, poor Snow? <laughs> Well, I mean, I was going to say, how much time does she think of the group's going to give her for that? <laughs> hey, like yeah. Five minutes or so. Five minutes? But it's going to be like, come on, Viola, how long does it take to, to introduce I'm yourself? I'm just trying to make sure that Cherry is comfortable so that our ride is a little less bumpy than last It'll time. It'll be fine. How about how while this is happening, you guys decide which way we're going to go. Are we going to go the way that we went the first time? Or the way that we came back. The original, the way that we came back. We have a stop right. to make. Precisely. Yes. But I'm sorry. Precisely. But how hard can it yes. be? Bo's just gonna walk over and he's gonna pet the horse on the nose. Be like, see, that's all you had to do. <laughs> Animal handling check at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's his first disadvantage rule. And wow, there were two different extremes. He got a twenty and a one. <laughs> oh um, man Cherry you lose a finger you you <laughs> pet down Cherry's nose she bites your hand um, she Viola bites your hand laughs like it's only one point one, one point, point of uh, HP subtract that as her as her flat little teeth go right on your hand ah you stupid <laughs> beast <laughs> bow Careful. Just like that. Back in the cart. <laughs> well, just make it quick. <laughs> Look, it'll be fine. Stay and we'll pat. We'll give Viola a little pat on the shoulder and cast guidance so she has an extra D4 to add to the ability check. Let's get going. Okay, Viola and, will climb up mm -hmm. into the cart. And... and as after Cherry had bitten Bo, Nora had gone over to uh, kind of settle her as well. And she also has this, these very gentle, seemingly... Uh, accustomed to like movements like under the horse's chin and kind of like patting the sides of her cheek and then she seems to calm down pretty quickly as well uh, as you guys are talking amongst yourselves and then when she sees you getting in ready to go she will join she does offer to guide the horse if necessary oh i think i've got it that's okay uh nora might could help yeah. you take the exact path we need to the forgetting that love for the sword well yes we have we're doing what? What's with the sword? We want to give a quick look for Kalane's sword when we're passing by the area where she was. Okay. There's also a certain carriage we need to stop by and take a look at. Alright, it's a nice area. 
Uh-huh. The one that was there? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. You saw it. Yes, I was there. A yeah. broken it has significance to you? Oh, slightly. Speaking of Colleen's sword, do you know how when she got it? How long has she had it? I'm afraid not. Would it be possible I... when we get back for us to talk to Kamugul? We have a reason to have a few more questions about what happened in Colleen's last moments. Anything he has said, he should have already said to his captain and well, his captain. I'm sure you can speak to them. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. So you don't Anything. know many of those details yourself then? Because he wouldn't have reported to you? No, I'm afraid not. And even his captain has not informed me of much. But in their defense, I suppose, this one time... Sorry, I shouldn't speak bitterly. But in their defense, I was also unconscious for... Or at least under the weather, it seems, for quite a bit of time. And I have not had many visitors, so... There is yeah, more information I can tell. I felt it. But not for terribly long. In my mm. own defense. Anyway... I can help navigate. We'll be fine. Sorry, I'll help navigate and we'll be fine. I mean, we're not <laughs> in the town anymore. <laughs> I'm not no, no, allowed to keep playing along? As long as she along? has the disguise on. As long as the disguise is on, she has to keep the accent. Sure. <laughs> Those are the rules of play I've always learned. Do you know someone named Maton? Who? What? Maton. Maton. DM doesn't know which name we're trying to say. Trying to say one of the names mentioned in the dream sequence about Colleen. Shoot, what was it? Matron? M was it supposed to be Matron? Oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Oh, yes. Is that what it's supposed to be? Because you corrected so many other names in that paragraph, you left that one alone. Crag, the Crag Matron is a title. Is that right. the one? I guess so. Yeah. And I think Stan would be, Stan would be familiar because well, she a... had a conversation with Valir and Urgen. So I just typed something wrong and thought it was a different person. She mentioned Crag Matron, which is a title. That would be, in this instance, her mother. Gotcha. Crag Patron, also the title. The, the patriarch of that family, also her father. And then just culturally, Crag Patrons would refer to both of them. Okay. So instead of asking that, then... <laughs> I apologize for the confusion. Matron! <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's not like you're like, going oh, no, French. Might know Matron. <laughs> Matron. <laughs> no, instead of asking that, he asks her, have you ever heard of someone who uh, titles themselves the Doctor? He pauses again. Give me an insight check. Everyone or just him? Because we're all looking at her. Well, at least... The two of us. I don't know who who all. Uh, I mean, Viola's who, steering. I'm guessing. That's true. But the other one. If you're paying the attention, back. if you are paying attention to the conversation, sure, give me an insight check. Cool. Thirteen. Fourteen. It's insight. <laughs> Twenty-one. Golly. Oh, I'm high. Snow and Stan, you see her pause for a moment. Again, her eyes kind of like go off into nowhere, but it looks more like a like a blank like trying to recall to be helpful and she shakes her head no i don't think so Bo, you see that same thing but something in the blankness is like very blank in that moment it's it's hard to explain but like maybe reaching into like a memory she doesn't know she has or or it, you... it might be familiar but it's just cannot recall and it just feels like a no to her do she shakes her head. It could have just been no. something that you may have heard in passing, and then circumstances made you maybe forget to suppress it a little bit. I, it, Tucked it, it, it away it, it, back there in that mind of yours. <laughs> have you ever had memory problems? No. I, I know that seems like a random question. It but does. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not playing I along. I ask those sometimes. <laughs> uh, she goes back kind of jokingly and goes back to that pirate voice. No, I can't recall having issues with memory. No. Well, that's good because you seem quite young still, so it'd be bad if you already had the mind slipping. <laughs> it looks like she's about to say something and then remembers you're an elf 
and isn't sure exactly how old you are. And she just says, thank you. Every woman my age loves to hear that they look young. Why do you ask? Um, because as Stan probably mentioned, um, there were some things that we found. And one of them is a journal written mm. by someone who uh, titled themselves The Doctor. And it is uh, the worst thing I've ever read. Um, I don't recommend it. It's not fun. Actually, can was... I borrow that book? Why? To read it. Why do you want to read it? Well... Wait, can we go back to where this came up in the first place? Because if there's something I can be helpful with, I'd be happy to do additional research. There's already more research I need to be doing anyway, and I might need to take a bit of a trip, so I'll add it to my list of things. It was about uh, experimentation on various peoples and their resistance to the dark. You see, but I have a slightly stronger stomach on those kind of things, so maybe I'll see something that you may have not picked up on because of the gratuitous nature of it all. I read all of it. I'm not saying you didn't, but is there an issue with me reading it? No, I'm just curious as to why you don't want to say why you want to. I'm but saying I read it. I'm I'm being completely honest. <laughs> he he pulls it out and he hands it to to Bo. Did I take a look at it? Sure, but I want it back. It's mine. I've... I don't actually want it, but you know, it's still I'll mine. be sure it gets back <laughs> to its owner. <laughs> <laughs> May I? Okay, yeah, you passed it over. <laughs> okay. So she'll, she sits back and she, just just holding it and looking at it and going to the first of the pages, she kind of looks back and, and says, I understand why you're immediately uncomfortable with it. And then she starts looking through the pages and she notes, like, there's a lot here. How long did it take you to go through this? Just a couple of days. I, I read fast. Ah, that was never my forte. And she just continues kind of thumbing through the pages. It looks like she doesn't really know quite where to look. She's just kind of taking in a few pages at a time, just brief gleaming. But as you might expect, it makes her clearly uncomfortable to see some of these descriptions. And then almost seeming to like give up on a particular passage or anything that's kind of going to click in her mind, other than just the grotesque nature of it, she hands it back to you, Bo. That is... That is incredibly... In... You found that in that band you were in. Yes. And while I haven't thought about it very much, I will say that it made me think of you and your illness, as your illness seems to pertain to prolonged exposure to the dark. You should think I would... I should think I would know if something like that were... Hence, memory issues. I don't have memory issues. Or maybe you do, but you don't remember that you have them. See, that, that would get you. That would, that would, that would really, that'd really be a problem there. All right, explain what you mean. Is it moments of time missing? Is it just forgetfulness? Is it... What do you... I don't mean generally forgetful. I mean, like, there's a section of time in your past that you just can't recall. Or maybe, like, say you were one of the doctor's little subjects, maybe maybe it was so uncomfortable you just kind of tucked it away there in your mind. Torture can do that to you, you know. I mean, yeah, <sighs> trauma. But also, uh, <laughs> exposure to some items of the dark does that. Uh, and I know that because it did that to me. So... I, Did I mention I, that? I don't know if we mentioned that. That happened. So, there was You've that. lost memory. Yep. Has... Yeah, so you... we found a ruby, right? Another one, like the one in the crown. Um, I mentioned that You part. never saw the crown, I don't think. No, but I saw the ruby that Goro had. Right. Well, it was another one, exactly like it. And while I was carrying it around, I kept having moments kind of long moments where I would just not remember anything that happened during it. Thankfully, the others have informed me that nothing interesting happened during that time, so I don't really Absolutely care. Absolutely nothing. But I believed you more before you said it like that. But, okay, sure. Um, I don't remember what I was saying anymore. Moments of forgetfulness. Probably wasn't important. Because of a reason. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, 
had the ruby that was happening put the ruby into bag of holding which right extra dimensional space so not like on me and then it stopped happening and, and then i gave it to aglan i hope aglan hasn't forgotten he has the rubies that would suck i don't have any rubies though no but you did have an item of the dark that you didn't know you had so it's possible also if something crazy happened to you in your childhood like maybe when you were 11 years old then maybe what? that would be why it's yeah maybe specific. you didn't hit that passage but there was there was a girl um that was it was the worst part i don't recommend it um but there was a girl uh, he looks female, like you bo female what i'm just reading <laughs> he has the book in his hand <laughs> so i was wondering how long you've had this illness of yours um and if you know how you got it she grabs the book from bo what he's reading that <laughs> <laughs> And, Don't rip the pages. <laughs> and she holds out to you. Where does it talk about? Where does it talk about that? No, we'll thumb through it to that part. And then she's just lost in it. She just she starts going through. And before she was like, sort of carefully flipping and not carefully, but like flipping page to page. She's now on this page where you've pointed her, and she's just going through it. And she has this really aggravated look on her face as she's reading through this, but she goes quiet. She doesn't say anything for a solid 10, 15 minutes. She's just not responsive. She's just reading. Give me a perception check, everyone. 14. 31. 16. Uh, 17. She's very clearly agitated as she's reading this. No, and you're already putting pieces together, so you kind of suspect you're onto something, and you do see an expected just agitation on her face. There's like a frustration there. Viola and Bo, you guys can see this look on her face. Beyond the agitation, it's like she's trying to make it make sense. Like it's it's like right there. There's there's something. Not necessarily what Snow is saying or what you guys might suspect, but something is sitting there and she's just flipping back forth, back forth a few times, finding other spots. And she stops again at the end of this section for this this 11-year-old girl. And it's it's fairly lengthy, even in these like kind of cliff notes, because it was, what, 600-something days. Stayin', you can see... I guess from your vantage point, you can see her finger is like tapping towards the end of this passage. You can make note. Her eyes are kind of... She's not like sniffling like she's crying, but you can see like a reddening as if holding back tears kind of... But it looks unconscious to you. Like she doesn't recognize in herself that her eyes have started watering. And even as she blinks and, and closes it and a single tear escapes that she seems surprised by and kind of wipes at it. She hands the book back to Bo. Sorry, I didn't mean to snatch that from you. That was impolite. He's um, been impolite to you. Nonsense. It's true, even if so, it doesn't it doesn't mean I should do the same. I apologize. Sure. As if forgetting, more just kind of dismissing. She just, she looks, she turns away. She kind of looks back out towards where you guys are, where the horse is leading. She does not prompt anything else. She just looks out. Her eyes are no facey. Snow moves to sit next to her instead of like across from her and puts a hand on her shoulder. She flinches immediately. Sorry. Yes? Are you all right? I mean, I don't know how you could be after reading that, but... I don't know. I don't... I don't know who that girl is. But I do? So there is something. Would you mind if I were to try to examine your thoughts? And see if maybe I can find out what is blocking this for you? How do you mean? I have magic that I can use to peer into someone's mind. 
I don't normally ask before doing it, but uh, this might require going a bit deeper than I normally go anyway. It seems like something you definitely ought to ask beforehand. <laughs> and like her laugh is entirely uh, only, only if you get caught. Oh, I see. Do you want to know what you don't know? How does it make you feel? Why in all the hells would I want to know? <laughs> is it something that you do know? But I can certainly understand that there are some things that we would rather forget. I feel like I've invited you into something more than I entirely anticipated. Um, I apologize. Um, Snow, give me a persuasion check. You can use any boosts and blah 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 and Game guidance will, and blah blah blah, blah whatever you want to do. Guidance. Well, guidance is really the only thing he can get. He can't inspire himself. Yeah. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> Make like it count. is giving me guidance. Yeah. Make it for count. some reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. he's just as interested in this as as Snow is. All right. That's a sixteen. Sixteen. He, you, you can hear the clear hesitation in her voice. How much are you looking at? I'm afraid I don't know because I don't know what there is to find. I'm not trying to look through your entire being or anything of that sort <laughs> but you don't even know how much you don't know i don't know i don't even know that this will work it might not but if it does it might remove the block or it could just allow me to see past it and then you won't even realize that it happened i don't know we're dealing with things beyond what any of us are really sure about who puts children in charge of things like this? <laughs> and it's like this very bitter sounding laugh. And she kind of sits, she sits back and she looks at you for a moment before looking back at her lap. And her cheeks are kind of reddening a bit, like almost embarrassed as she kind of feels everyone's eyes on her, whoever's looking. What would you be doing? What magic is this? It's called Detect Thoughts. I can. Ah. Are you familiar? <laughs> um, all right. You can start with that. Superficial, right? At first. But that won't bring us to the things you don't even know you don't know. Not there, anyway. All right. He will um, spend a charge. And she looks back down at her lap, and she kind of closes her eyes and clenches them shut, as if she's trying to help. She's trying to think about you know, the book, and she's trying to make that clear. So you spend the charge, you get these initial surface thoughts that are kind of bouncing around. It's the letters on the page. And then you see that silhouette again. You see another part of the journal entry, and you see, again, more of those known memories, that dark space it, for a few seconds, depending on how long you want before you choose to push deeper but you also see another page and then you see kind of clearer in that dark space you see a, a little campground you see a, a small dead fire and a blanket beside it but you can feel the time moving and the charge being used as she's got her eyes closed just trying to focus on that do you choose to go deeper yeah and he he says out loud i'm going to go a bit deeper now all right just let it flow as you do that, give me a persuasion check. You can have more guidance. <laughs> Just a good old pat on the back. Only eight. You, you tell her you're going to do that, and you see her shake her head. I can I can remember. I can try. And she kind of keeps clenching her eyes shut. Do you go through with it anyway? He just whispers, because he's so close to her. He just whispers, I'm so sorry. And he's going to go deeper anyway. Okay. What's the DC? 13. She rolled a seven on her die, and it's only a plus three. So she only rolled a 10. Oh, she's got decent wisdom, though. She's very wise. <laughs> yeah. She's pretty wise. Good for her. <laughs> Particularly for There's a fighter. There's other things she You would she think can that do. would be more neglected. <laughs> There's Depends other on the things kind of fighter. Can. Depends <laughs> on the person. You whisper this, and you see her kind of clenching her fist, and you kind of parse through this now very 
foggy and incorporeal kind of scene of that deadened bonfire and it kind of slips away uh, parting like clouds in the wind into a darker space and you can tell almost immediately as you begin looking deeper she was focusing what what becomes clear to you is again that that silhouetted figure is with her and these thoughts seem to be following it which in one moment it's almost like a slideshow of images but this figure is in all of them in one the dark campground or camp out area and the figure is sitting beside her face is intent on where a fire once was perhaps and you can see features they look like masculine features he has tannish skin slightly elongated nose seems a muscular sort kind of a softer jaw line and you can see a cloak is pulled back and he has this very dark brown kind of curly hair i recognize him no you see this man's face and you can see as he turns to look at her you assume you're looking through her eyes almost and as he turns to look at her you can see some features on him that kind of remind you of her including his eyes he has lighter eyes like she does and he kind of has a smile it's, it's a very fatherly smile it's very paternal smile and there's a hesitant almost reluctant but still given kind of warmth from her towards this man and the scene shifts again and you see she's standing beside him there you see her arm kind of wrapped around his in a more public place but they're sort of on the outskirts so there's people further in or further into like a town setting all of them with this gray hue to their skin these two are separated and she's looking up at him he's not looking at her he is looking at a path leading away from this town still that kind of hopeful warmth towards him it changes again they're back in the dark or it's it's dark out and there's something unclear as you're looking ahead he's still beside her but whatever the darkness is ahead is kind of reminds you of the mist but it is closed in it is very tight it is very dark but you can feel yourself moving in that direction and that warmth that she has with this man is even further kind of choked. It's becoming harder to pull it up, to feel it. It shifts again. There is a small room. There are, it looks like a set of chains, potentially manacles of some kind. She's by herself in this room. It's very sparse. It is very uninviting it's cold it's stone and metal and there is somewhere nearby and it's all you can kind of feel is somewhere nearby that presence of that man but you can't see him the warmth is diminished even further it starts to fade again what's the intelligence save if she is trying to resist it on her turn she can make an intelligence check contested by mine Oh, it's just contested. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll it. Guidance again. Uh, I'm just going to assume Stan's hand is on his back the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> She's also keeping an eye on Nora, but she wants this information mm -hmm. as much as the rest. What you guys 17. are seeing... 17? What you guys are seeing from the outside is her eyes were clenched already, and her hands have moved to the seat, to the bench and you can see her knuckles going white as she is holding on to them, as if trying to break them, but she's just holding on. For a moment, you're hearing all kinds of nature sounds and such as you guys are traveling. And for a second, as you guys are just kind of so intent on Nora and the situation, you think you hear something for a moment uh, over, uh, you're not really sure, somewhere to the side. And uh, you look, you just see Bo kind of maybe hand near his face, but not. It's, it's kind of hard to understand. He's just he's just kind of 
back to whatever you guys are doing. Just seems an odd movement is all. But he looks a little uncomfortable. 17, you said. Yes, ma'am. You feel this pulse of resistance that you're able to brush, you're able to push through. And you keep looking. He whispers but it was... again into her ear. He's got his eyes closed through all of this. He still has one hand on her shoulder. And his, his head is, is bowed. It's right next to hers. And as he feels that, he whispers again, I'm so sorry. And as the smokiness, the, the mist was starting to come back over and, and make it fade as she was pushing away. And then it starts to come back. But a new scene has appeared behind it as it moves aside. And you're still in that room. You're still in that space, but you feel the chill, this frigid clutch of the metal on her ankle. And you can, you can't sense that presence at all anymore in this moment. It's just, it's just her. And then there's this corner that is not even the misty darkness. It's like a cut out darkness. There's something just missing there and her eyes are intent on it. Whatever that is, it's just unclear. It is cut from this scene. But there's also this terrible kind of sour and burning feeling in the back of her throat and the scene disappears. Another appears and it feels like time has moved forward, but it's just impossible to know how much. There's less of the agitation and more of a hopelessness of a leaning, sitting back, just waiting, just very passive. It's cold, it's, but also humid, tired, so tired. And even though someone is coming, she knows it's more of the same. Someone's coming take her away momentarily and then bring her right back. And it's just going to keep going and going. It fades again, appears, and that man is back. He's beside her. The room is full again. The cutout is not there anymore. And I'll say it, it had been there a, a few times in other images of this boxy room, this cold stone and metal cell. The man is in front of her, kneeling. The manacle is off of her ankle. And while she's tired, which is the overwhelming sense, there's this budding underneath of just, it's hard to say exactly what it is, but it is piercing. And as she sees him is when it just kind of comes up in her. It's almost like a desperation. Roll the intelligence again. I still got guidance. Recasting every time it gets used. 17. 17. Okay. The presence is there, and you feel it It almost wasn't even... In fact, it wasn't conscious. It was not a conscious decision. It was just a moment of pure fear and desperation as there's something in her hand. And this presence is kneeling in front of her. It fades again. And you're in this dark again. It's not the cell. It's a different kind of outside. But that presence is gone. She's thinking about him and where she last saw him, which was laying on the ground. What you all see outside is this well, first, Snow, I need you to give me a dexterity check. I need you to do it at disadvantage. How did you do it? 19. What you all see is, as Nora had been so tense, and you can see suddenly there's like these tears that are streaming down the sides of her face. And just as that happens, you see her right arm immediately. It's at her side, at her hip, pulling the dagger and aiming it at Snow. Snow, you're able to move aside. She only rolled a two. And there's this almost like feral scream. Did you want to do something, Stan? Stan was going to try and disarm her when she sees that. Like, just gently take the dagger from her hand if she can. 
I will allow you an opposed dexterity. You can add your acrobatics. As she's doing that, Snow holds his hand, his other hand up as if to say stop. Yeep. To Stan. How'd you do? Stan got a 17. Yeah, she got a 19 before I added her modifiers. So you're not able to get to her in time before she's taking the swing. And just as she's about to like bring it back at you, Snow, and you hold your hand up and she stops it, it's like right at your neck. And her eyes are not even looking at you. They are so far gone in this instant. But as she stops and kind of catches eyes with you, you see her falter and immediately sit back and drop the dagger. And she begins apologizing profusely. I am so sorry. I did not, I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Snow just kind of falls forward a bit. He falls forward onto his his knees, like in the bottom of the cart, off the bench, and just with his hands over hers, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. She doesn't have anything. She doesn't have any other words. She stops looking at you, and she just sits back in the bench, and is just staring off at nothing. And there are still tears falling down her face. I was also crying. So we're looking for a sword. Underneath their shoulders. And just like try to grab, provide a grounding presence. Just not saying anything, but there for both of them. Both start speaking. She will glare at him. Um, He's not looking over it by them. (laughs) He's just sitting off in the corner of the wagon. (laughs) Between snow having, snow touching her hand, and you do feel her kind of flinching her hand out of your grip whether or not you'll let go she feels he he feels her flinching her hand out of his grip and she will flinch away from your touch saying as she's staring off at nothing that was that was me that was him and she just repeats that every now and then no one deserves to go through what you went through right viola how's that navigating going up there That's what I was just going to ask is how well (laughs) Viola is able to get wherever she's supposed to be getting to with the directions that Nora was going to be giving her. (laughs) I would assume that she like originally gave her some sort of directions when we got started. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not too dissimilar from your original path. You can, you, you know where it's going to kind of veer off differently, but it's a pretty straightforward path as you guys are traveling Kind of off in the distance, there are like little, you could see where the the main paths go and you were told you'd be going off of a more main path because this area is kind of abandoned and potentially was going to be rebuilt. But give me a survival check and we'll see how well you remember the directions before your navigator was distracted. That's a five. I'm not very well. You kind of start finding yourself on the track back to the long way around. (laughs) <laughs> start, start heading in that like, direction. Oh yes, this is familiar. Wait, for the wrong reason. <laughs> precisely. Precisely. And you start start veering in that direction. But uh, while it does take you longer and and it's taking you towards Undra proper in this roundabout way, you do know at least that in some odd hours, more than you expected, but in some odd hours, you will reach Undra. Nora is slightly out of commission, not quite taking in any more of what you're saying. We'll ask for the journal back at some point, if you are willing to give that back to her. I think Bo had it last. Sure. And then that but is where she is now. still wants it back. Him. That's fair. I'm sure when she's <laughs> in her right mind, she'll give that back to you. He wants to, no, primarily, and I'll let you know this, he wants to see if there might be any kind of messages in there that could be like thieves can't or anything like that, that people might not immediately pick up on. So that's part of the reason why I also want to read it. That's fair. And you can give me an investigation on what you started to look at already. Oh, well, he probably hasn't gotten very far because he's been distracted with what's going on with them. Fair. So. I mean, it's up to you. I just don't think he would have had the time to start it yet. Yeah, Yeah. no worries. Then unless there's more you wanted to do on the wagon or on the cart ride, you guys find yourselves 
getting closer to along the familiar route. You can warn Viola that it looks too familiar if you'd like. <laughs> this is clearly heading towards Undra and not first the forest yeah. area. <laughs> Fame would probably notice. So she'll mention something and try to help Viola mm-hmm. get back on course, but she's keeping a hand on snow. Yeah, and I'll say- I would have gotten there quicker if you guys hadn't taken away my navigator. <laughs> okay, Bo. <laughs> She's just speaking facts. If that's what Bo is known for, I'm fine with it. <laughs> you guys do manage to get back on course and find yourselves now probably mid, or, well, you guys left. We left like around... before noon, because we didn't let Viola yeah. do a thing. So it would probably been like, between 10 and 11. So it was like okay. 9.30 when we were at our house and we stopped yeah. to get the mail. So it's probably like mid-afternoon, mid-late afternoon um, because you took this longer route and then put back around. But you do find yourselves, having taken this kind of wonky path, you do find yourselves getting back into that forested area and it does feel... You remember that air around the forest before had been a little bit sticky, a little bit heavy as that dark mist was settling in. And as you're getting back on the path and coming back up to that area, you do see that again, that mistiness in the air that tells you, it reminds you of where you are. And as you, what looks different though, on this part of the path, coming up, you hadn't been there and we can change. When you look out, coming now the way you had left, when you look out there, you do spot that wagon. It looks like it's tilted. And as you get closer, you can see why. Because in that area, and This is the you silver still see... cat wagon? Sorry, mm-hmm. I just went, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. You still see that gigantic, that one really large, deadened looking tree you see another tree that had uh, another tree that had been there, the one that you had climbed, I believe, last time. Yeah. But what looks different is that you can see reaching further down. You can see the enormous roots of that giant tree. You can see them sticking out from the earth because what you see is this enormous pit just seemingly dug out in the ground. It's, what, 40 feet across. It's hard to see how deep the pit is, but it definitely sinks far enough that you're seeing those long, really thick roots. But it now takes up this huge chunk of that otherwise cleared out area of those dead trees and in that dark mist. But you guys have arrived, at least back in this area. Bo, let's go check this out. Viola, can you keep an eye on them? I most certainly can. Viola will turn so that she's facing Snow and Nora and just keep an eye on them. So we're going up to the wagon hey now? Stay in them, Bo. check out the area, the wagon, the pit, the... Yeah, yeah, I was... He wants to get the one thing off the list for <laughs> Helena. One thing and at then, a time. And then he does want to go in the pit, too. There's a Viola the will pit. every Oh, he wants then. to go in the pit. <laughs> they didn't even need a shovel for this one. <laughs> every now and then, Viola will, like, do a sweep of the area just so that she's, like, keeping an eye on the surroundings as well. They start to go, and as you guys, as the cart is stopped, you kind of see the first really noteworthy change that you've seen in Nora in probably some hours. It stops and she looks up as if just suddenly realizing where she is. And there is just this small little like little cough, little teeny tiny cough, little baby cough as she realizes that you guys have arrived. Bo and stay in. You guys start to go look around. So you go straight to the, go to the cart first. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. You go up to the cart and you immediately realize that the, you knew the cart was where it was and what it was because of where it was parked last, but the tarp over it is off. It's in the dirt in front, in front of it and kind of leaning just a little bit over the dip 
of that pit. The cart itself, the wagon itself, is also like slightly leaning as if weighted down. So the top portion of it is slightly over the side of this pit. The back seems to be heavy enough or there's enough of it that it hasn't just tipped. But you can see where that big barrel is still on there. And I think that was, I'm trying to remember if there was anything else. I think I that didn't was, put the that original was, notes. That was really like the only thing that you described as being like left. Mm-hmm. Because everything else that he could grab, he grabbed. He just put a hole in that in case it could be explosive for those things. But it didn't smell like alcohol. Give me, you both can give me a perception check. Still got a one. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> this is on you, stay in. <laughs> 32. Good. <laughs> it's like he doesn't want his stuff back. As you are walking, Bo goes like straight for that barrel. He's like, I know what I'm here for and then we can get out. Saying as you're walking, you step and you feel something before you get to the wagon. You feel something hard under your foot. And when you look, you see a couple of these large shards of mirrored glass. You see the one under your foot and you see another one that's a little further away towards the base of the tree. And as you look up, you can see as if at first it's kind of strange to see it so high, but you see what appears to be a metal rim. It's kind of a dull tone. So it almost just doesn't stand out much against the dull tree, but there's like a metal rim and you now realize it's the frame of a mirror and you can see a couple more pieces or the rest of those pieces of kind of broken glass in it. It seems almost as if where you had originally seen the wagon, this might have been, it might have like short stopped and this thing might have gotten literally like launched up. So it's on like a lower branch, but like looks like it dinged the tree as it was kind of thrown out. But you do see this this mirror and the, the missing pieces are on the ground. Hey, Bo, this mirror might have also come from that wagon. You think so? I mean, hmm. look at the way it is. How many pieces are broken short. off of it? Yeah, it looks like there's three or four of these, like, fatter shards. Uh, and then the rest are pretty intact in the mirror, just cracked a bit. All right, well, let's, let's lay it down on the ground, and then I can just kind of position and put it back together. Can we reach it in the tree? How high up is it in the tree? It's not too, too high. Well, if Bo wants to just walk his way up, he can just walk his way up. If yeah, Stan wants that. to, it'll be an... Okay. He's just kind of like saying his thought process as to what to do with it. Because he could use mend on the cracks between them as well as they like position them. Mm -hmm. All right. So he's going to go up the tree and then bring it back back down. Okay. You bring the rest of that mirror back down. And if you start to fit the pieces on, they, they do fit. It's surprisingly well put together and it does fit easily enough. It's clearly cracked, but the pieces... So kind of like use, puzzle pieces. So I use mending on the cracks, which it does take a minute per. So to give you an idea of the time that would take. Is that a cantrip? Oh, yeah. I was mending that. Stayin will start looking around more. Stayin starts looking around. But back in the wagon, as you guys have been doing this, Nora is looking at this space. She's looking around. She stands and she puts the journal aside. And then she starts, she doesn't say anything. She just starts to make her way off the wagon. Towards us, or stand. just in a direction? She's She appears to be heading towards the tree, which is on the other side of this yeah. large pit, but she appears to be heading in that direction. Okay. Viola, Viola will stand and look at Snow and be like, I'm going to follow her. Are you okay? Okay, stay Snow here. stands up. <laughs> oh. No, Snow stands up and follows. Okay. Silently. Viola will holler over and stay in and wave and just say, hey, we're taking a field trip. I don't know if we're headed, <laughs> like, but. I was gonna, oh, wait, I'm so sure are they in, attention. are they, so are they currently, like, in view, both of them? Like, oh, snow yeah. and. Oh, yeah, there's, there's not much here. It's, like, a big open right. clearing, except for where the trees are along kind of the edge of this clearing. Um, so, yeah. I was gonna okay. make a mind link with every anyone that wants to join, minus Nora. Because she's certainly not Hi. looking, but also he doesn't have the initiative for it. Um, or not the initiative, the proficiency for it. Who who wants to join it? Is anyone not? 
Okay. So we got for one hour, They're guys. <laughs> this one's going They're over to the party. <laughs> Look at them all just raising their hand. Remember when you both first asked, like, who wants to get in my brain? And Sans, like, I will never. I could open up a little mind link situation um, if we want to communicate telepathically, but I can only do that, that for fun. I can only do that for some of the party. I can't do it for everybody yet. I have no desire to have a mental link with you. <laughs> oh, come on, Stan. I will never. <laughs> Just add some character. Come bro. so far. Yeah. I love you all. So great. <laughs> um, Communication is gravely important. Are they still like, do they seem to be still in earshot or anything like that? Or are they farther? They're probably about 30 ish feet away from the wagon. So there's the, there'd be the long way around this pit, and then there's a shorter way around that. If you look at the map I have here, it's kind of like off the map, but it'd be like a whoop. In the mind link, he's gonna message specifically to stay in. Um, so, question to you. Um, you haven't told people about my little thing, have you? Thane takes a second to respond, but then she just <laughs> looks over towards him and shakes her head. That's for you to share. And I recommend you share it with the rest of our party at some point. But I will not spill your secrets unless it becomes gravely necessary to do so. Okay. How would you feel about one more little secret? <laughs> Boom. All right. But not too many questions on it, mind you. <laughs> I don't tend to ask that many questions. I'm not you. A good point. <laughs> um, so, let's... Well, I won't say hypothetically, because I think it's pretty clear. I have one of those key things on me. Okay. So, my understanding was there was some discussion about those dark shards potentially being keys or something like that. I don't know. My memory on the subject is foggy, but... Yes, we talked about those quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I also had another memory lapse. I gathered that. <laughs> but there's a potential that we got in and out of places relatively easy because I've been around. It's possible. Except for maybe that last one. That one seemed different. But other places, perhaps. It's true. Just one question. All right. When did you require that? Was it before or after your little... My little what? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't hear gestures <laughs> in the mind. <laughs> 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 It did her so badly to have stopped talking and looked at him and was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Was it before or after you became the Dumpier? After. Did you take it willingly? Sort of. All right. You're not like using it to access the dark and plot against us or anything, are you? No. What, you think I'm doing like some kind of ritual <laughs> on it? No. Just want to see how you respond to that. Did I pass? For now. <laughs> All right, but we could just keep that between us, because you ask a lot less questions than everyone else. <laughs> you don't think it could be the cause of your memory problems, do you? Well, I've had it for... many decades now, <laughs> and okay. this is the first I've had memory loss. I bet you're aware of. Well, I would notice gaps. I've been noticing the gaps. That's fair. All right. Anything That's interesting over there? I don't know. I got distracted by this conversation. Have I seen anything <laughs> interesting over here? As you were putting the mirror together, or you had gone oh, elsewhere? Those putting the mirror together, that takes a few minutes with the mending spell. Stan was right. going to go start looking yeah. more... At the pit oh, itself. right, the pit. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. You, mm -hmm. you head over <laughs> to the edge of the pit, and that's when you can see Nora, Snow, and Viola have gotten out of the wagon, and they are also headed towards this pit. But you can see, if they're following Nora, she's starting to go around it and kind of making her way towards that large tree. 
You, as you get closer, you see the ground looks a little darker, as if damp, perhaps. And when you look over, you can see that all of the inside of the pit is this darker colored dirt. It doesn't look like it is. There are no like pockets where it's wet. It's just all darker as if it were damp. Darren's going to scoop a little bit of the dirt into her hand and like look at it, sniff it. She's wondering if it's anything like blood or other stuff they've seen with the dirt. Give me an investigation check, please. Has she seen how deep it is yet? Yeah, at this point you can look over and see it's approximately 25, 30 feet deep. Is it, deep. It's like a straight drop or is it kind of like a cone type dome it's, type thing? It's fairly steep. It does kind of, it, it's not even, it's not like it was carved out neatly. It looks like a pit was created. So it's not all neat, but it is steep. You'd want to be careful going down there. 15? Mm -hmm. Yet when you lift it and kind of put it near your face a bit, it does give you this sharp scent, this coppery sharp scent. Is it like what she smelled in the dream with Colleen? I didn't really describe smells. Oh, I guess I did some. Yes, I did. Yes. Are you telling Bo what you're seeing? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, she'll she'll tell Bo and tell him to spread it to the to tell the others that the ground seems to be soaked with blood. All right, I relay that to everyone. And then she's gonna look <laughs> further into the pit, see if there's anything. Can she see anything at the bottom of it? At the bottom of this pit. Well, you look that up, but Bo's also gonna message over to Snow. Snow, question: You have all of our rope, right, in your bag? Yes, I do. All right. <laughs> Could we have it? I want to go down in that pit, but if we don't know what's in there, it could be good to have a fall back in case you need to be dragged out or something like that. Snow will grab one of the... He has a few of them now. Yeah, I think you have all the ropes, so I think we have, like, at I least 180 feet of rope. Feet of <laughs> I think you have, have 150 feet oh. of rope. <laughs> oh, yeah, because one of them's still trimmed. still has her rope, so add 44 feet yeah. to that, and that's what we have in total. <laughs> Almost 200 feet of rope total. I don't think it's enough. I think we need to get more. <laughs> more rope. You can't have too much rope. You always need rope. Always need more rope. Exactly. More rope. How else is staying going to get over the wall? Exactly. I mean, it does have an ace in her pocket for that if she needs it. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting this rope out, or he mentioned it, and you can double check it as you're approaching this large tree. Give me a perception check, Snow and Viola, if you're still following. 12. 16. As you guys get closer, you're not quite at the base of this tree, but you can see the big nodding roots that are reaching out, some down and out, their edges poking out and through the walls of this pit. Others are up top where you are. Uh, you can see where they're kind of coming up in some areas and then they eventually sink back down. But you also see, and past some of the trees that are also around it, you can see in the ground, there are more of these kind of shallow dips. These do look a little bit more neatly created in these rectangular shapes. They do appear to be empty and you can see Nora slows down as you get to them and her eyes are on the ground. She kneels near one and kind of brushes her hand along the edge of one stands up again, moves closer towards the base of the tree, her eyes on the ground the entire time as she's looking. She doesn't seem satisfied with what she's found. Viola's and it's, it's... <laughs> gonna stay, like, right next to her the whole time. This is uneven terrain here. It's It would be difficult, per se, just with between the knots and then these holes in the ground, these pits. But as you get around to the other side, is when you can see where a few of these, there could have been more. There could have been more of these dugout pits, but it looks like they might've gotten mixed with where this pit, this larger pit was created and crumbled away. And you can see Nora standing on the other side of the tree now, one hand resting against it, looking down at one of the spots. And there is, it looks like some 
rubble, some stone rubble by one of those. Not much. But there's a little something there. Does and she Viola stopped there. See it? If you're right next to her, then you can see it. Viola in the mind link is going to tell Bo. First off, I'm pretty sure one of these pits is what Nora fell into and got covered in blood. So maybe we need to be careful and not go in them. Also, I think we're at the pit where Kalane was. There's some bits of stone here. And Nora's paused at this pit. All right. Um, we'll make our way over in a moment. As you finish the mirror... And he would also do it to the knife stab that you put in the barrel, too. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think there's been enough time. It's only been, what did you need, a minute? It's a, a minute, minute for each one? So it's a minute per foot. Like, square foot, I believe. I still think I'd be plenty of time. Stan, he's just gonna say this out loud. You wanna help me get, like, the mirror and that into the wagon, and then we can go meet up with the others? Yeah, did they find something? They found potentially where Kalane died, it sounds. Yeah, let's get over there. Viola's going to ask Nora if she's okay. She doesn't seem to hear you for a moment. It takes a few seconds. But if you give her that time, she eventually turns to look at you. And her face is dried by this point. She looks at you and she's like, kind of forces. You can tell it's a forced smile. But she nods, looks back. It's okay to not be okay. I mean, what you experienced here was traumatic to say the least she looks back at you still smiling though no in this area i didn't experience much at all this one's not me but i do regret sending her out here well, no one could have foreseen what happened no i suppose not and she looks down at the pit too now as if kind of seeing it for the first time now as if she were so dead focused on the other thing um, she looks at it and kind of pondering, like, oh, I suppose this gives credibility to what Moonridge was saying. She's, like, looking there, and she's looking down at her feet, and she's near the edge of it. Uh, and you can see where a part of this pit has caved away into this larger chasm. Viola, Probably. the whole time she's near Nora, is, like, poised to catch her if she goes, to, like, if she falls in or she passes out. Or if she tries to go She just down has another five-minute coughing fit. <laughs> it was like 24 <laughs> seconds, okay? <laughs> That's still a miserable coughing fit. She kind of sees you doing this, Viola, and just like knows that you're just very close and your presence is very close. I mean, she doesn't tell you to stop or anything, but she does note. Last I checked, I was meant to be your mentor, your captain, and looking after you, not the other way around. Well, I would feel terrible if something happened, and that's kind of the job of a subordinate in, in a term, anyways, is to uh, be there to support the captain when she needs it. Well, you were very good the last time as well, so thank you. So... I was hoping there would be something we could bring back properly, but it seems we've missed that opportunity. She starts to reach for the stone and then stops herself, and she's eyeing it but not touching it. What were you saying, Bo? Oh, I was going to say, as they approach them, Bo's still going to ask, Hey, Snow, what about that rope? He's got it out. And it, while the others were, were speaking, Snow kind of turned aside so that he would have his, his back to them and used digitation so that it doesn't look like he had cried at all to just clean his face. Mm -hmm. um, so he looks near and then he turns back to face them, and he's he's got the rope out, and he just places it on the ground for Bo, whatever he wants to do with it. And I'm just going to start taking a look around, investigating the, the pit. Uh, and you do hear this kind of fleeting, and her, her voice just from disuse is sort of cracks a little bit, and she's saying, just careful not to touch anything that you ought not. I think I learned that lesson. Well, that's what the rope's for. <laughs> but touching things is my specialty. But it's gonna tie it. don't. He's, she's gonna what? <laughs> Head over to the stones that Viola mentioned that were found. She wants to <laughs> check those out because she has a good feeling of what bad feeling don't of touch. what those might be. <laughs> <laughs> no touchy. <laughs> As you approach, Nora will again iterate. Just careful not to touch anything. That's how I wound up 
in there, I believe. But it's gonna tie two of the ropes together to give him a hundred feet. Cause I don't think he would need more than that. And then he's gonna tie it around his waist. Viola, can you do me a favor? <laughs> Depends on what the favor is. Can you hold this end of the rope? <laughs> you should tie one end of the tree as well. well in addition. Hmm. Good idea. Can you tie this to the tree? <laughs> <laughs> You have a stronger touch than I do. She is good at knots. (laughs) She's also, like, I think eight points stronger than he is. (laughs) Yeah, that too. Mechanics! I think she's at least a 16 strength, isn't she? Oh yeah, something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's better than Bo's one. eight. I only have one character. Literally <laughs> double. <now>. Yeah. <laughs> Literally double Bo and Snows. <laughs> Excellent. You can give me a... Well, I wish I could remember what I had you roll. I think before it was survival. It seems to check out. I was going to say survival that... again. Well, she's much better at tying knots than she is at navigating. That's, a <laughs> one. That's good to know. <laughs> There he are gets numerous... in there who go, just... <laughs> goes right there are n- numerous branches and knots on these just extravagantly large roots that you could choose from. Are you choosing one of the one of the roots that's a little closer down towards the edge of the pit to kind of give him more room to drop? Are you using one of those maybe more sturdy looking branches a little higher up? Whatever looks the sturdiest is what she would use to tie it to as sort of an anchor. And then she's going to continue to hold the rope closer to where he is, like giving him slack as necessary as like an extra slower lowering. The way that the roots system kind of goes into the ground and comes back out, there is a spot where the root kind of comes up like a, like a joint and then sinks back in and that one doesn't go out into the pit. So it looks like it might be sturdier. So I'll say you'll use that facing the pit. Okay. Stain, you didn't find any swords over there, correct? I haven't found a sword yet. All right, I'll check down there and it's see if there's anything. very shiny. Gleams in the light. Stain, were you looking further beyond when you just picked up the dirt? I want to make sure I didn't forget. Um, yeah, were you looking looking very carefully. Okay. Because it all looks very similar to you as you just, like, touch and feel and touch and feel. and Yeah. It, it She's all now just... looking at those stones, trying to see if they are pieces of Kalein like she thinks they might be. Are you touching them or are you just investigating them with your sight? Starting by just investigating with them with her sight. Um, she is going to dig a small it, dagger uh, out of her it. bag that she can <laughs> use to turn them over without touching them herself. Give me an investigation check for something you can use to properly. Bo's gonna... Violet, I know that you tied it well, but if you could also like have your hands on it in case needs to be quickly reeled in. Yep, I am perfectly fine with uh, hanging on to it and giving you slack in the rope when you need it. Okay. Boa cautiously so. begin making his way down. You start heading down into the pit. You're kind of going just arm over arm. And he's it's looking around for little... any signs of traps as well. Like anything that might be triggering or something like that. Okay. Give me a perception check. That's very different. Are you spider climbing down or? Yeah. Oh, you're still just. I mean, he's not like running, but he's. (laughs) I make a little bit of a. It's not so much the rope. Oh, yeah, he's not like spelunking. The rope is for getting back up. (laughs) Yeah, in case something happens, it's to pull Gila in and not for assistance. I will say that even as you're. When you try and spider climb down, that wall is not. It's not stable like a stone wall or a wooden wall. The dirt, kind of like how Stan was able to like pick up and it'll clump some, but she could easily kind of reach her hand and just like claw it up. Um, It's not going to be incredibly stable along that wall. So you will need the rope's help. Yeah, he'll kind of like glide down, like slide. Yeah, it'll still be easier for you, but it's not like you're not going to just stick to that rope or you're just going to, or stick to the wall because your fingers will dig into the dirt. But his perception is a 19 or a 21. 21 it is. As you're going down, and you do note that you really wish this wall were more stable, 
but you can see there are areas of it that look almost like pock marks, kind of more rounded out a bit. Some of the dirt below those areas kind of looks like a, almost like a vein, like where something had trailed through it, which is a thin trail, almost spidering from some of these little pockmarked looking spaces. They seem a very random smattering, but once you see one as kind of your hands going by it with the rope, that's when you can see that there are others kind of like it, just throughout this wall of the of the chasm. And then you can see it along other areas too. As you're approaching the ground, you can also see some of these pockmarks there too. Okay, but they already look triggered or they look like set? Or something like that. Something has already happened there. Like if you touched it, nothing's happening if you if your hand goes by it. But something has happened there. And then I think Stan got something. Yeah, you can easily find from one of the other trees a, a nice sturdy looking, well, it's thick anyway, uh, of another one of these dead looking trees. And you can kind of use that if you want to try. Nora does look uncomfortable with you doing it. She warns you again that maybe touching it at all is just not the best idea, but it's entirely up to you. And she's standing kind of the same way Viola was standing at the ready for her. She's standing ready for you in case Dan something just happens. just looks at her and says, I think I know what I'm, I'm being careful. Good shift. Good shift. She raises an eyebrow and then still stands <laughs> ready, but yeah. she doesn't stop you any further. Stan will use the branch or whatever to more closely look at these pieces turning them or moving them around. There's not many of them. There's not much left there. Give me an intelligence check. We'll see if you can remember. And I guess your Ooh. guidance you can use on something like that? Because it's, it's a standard check? check? It's ability check? Yeah, she can use it for that. Okay. It's just saving throws and attack rolls. That she gotcha. Can. I remember to pay attention to that. Very well, and that's investigation. No, intelligence, just intelligence. Mm -hmm. That is a 22. The piece you start to turn, as you flip it, it looked like it was flat and didn't look like much. And as you're able to get the dick under it and flip it, you realize it too was partially kind of dug into some of this darker earth. And as it flips, you can see part of what appears to be these large fingers. That's one of her hands. Right hand, in fact. Does it look like it was holding something? They like, appear to be kind of curled. Just like I said. Did right, she just say was... that out loud? Yeah, she's just... But yeah, she sort of mutters it to herself, but she said it out loud. Did Viola hear that, or is she too focused on Bo? I don't know how focused you are on Bo. I guess <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> if you're, you're lowering him in, he's Bo, how much control do you have if, between you're you're just going down in the pit and you're using the wall? The wall's a little unsteady. Do you need much of her help or? Oh, I didn't realize she was helping down? him. Well, Viola has the rope. Oh, She's it. like <laughs> keeping it so that it's mostly not completely taut, but mostly taut, and just giving him slack as he goes down. So she's really just like watching and giving slack to the rope as he goes. So that way, if he were to fall, it wouldn't be a very long fall. It would just be like a short. Mm -hmm. I'll allow it. I'll say you could over here. Uh, you're as, basically as close as Nora is. As Nora is. Okay. So Viola's head snaps at Stan and says, So what? I thought I... Stan will look over at her a little confused. I thought I explained that I had a dream where... Are you having memory problems too, I know, but Viola? What are you... No, no, I remember that. I just don't know what she's doing <laughs> over there. She said just like what I saw. I what specifically is she talking about? A dream? Stan will look <laughs> over at Nora. Yes. I had a dream the other night where it'll sound really weird. I think a lot of things have sounded weird today. <laughs> I am no longer capable of being surprised. I lived Colleen's last moments as Colleen. Her well, last congratulations. You've surprised me. Well, the last moments I <laughs> saw the figure who petrified her and felt her head getting chopped from her shoulders. You saw them? Yes. And? And that's why we're... There's not much more I can do with that. 
Her sword had writing on it. In Infernal, crystal clear as day. If this is where it happened, where would the figure have been that cast a spell on her from our position? It would have been not much further into trees behind you. Snow looks in that direction. How about how far away is that? So Snow, you're you're over there with with the ladies. Okay. I'd say maybe another 20, 30 feet into the tree line. Those of you, so stay in Viola and Snow. I also need you to please give me a constitution. Saving throw. 16. 22. Okay. 17. Excellent. You guys, and I forgot to mention this and I apologize. As you got closer to the tree, it did feel like the the mist was kind of congealing a bit. Like it's it's thicker kind of in this area. Mainly, like it, it was just noticeably different. You can still see around and you were able to move about, but it was getting thicker. And at this point, you can kind of feel it almost cling more to you. It feels very uncomfortable, just as you're turning back snow, having seen what that distance might have been. To go over there. As you start stepping away, my nose. Also, is Bo finding anything here. down in this pit? Because <laughs> he is looking around. <laughs> Give me an investigation check. All right. 12. You find a lot of the same. You find slightly loosened dirt. Although down here, it feels a little more compacted. Just a little bit. It's a little easier to stand. But it's that same dark dirt. You see some more of those kind of pock marks down there. And uh, it decidedly smells much worse, actually, yeah. Down there, it smells much worse of Much that. worse to what? From above, it smells more like the, um, that coppery blood okay, smell. Okay, so it smells it more like thick blood down he's there. At. Yes. And I also need stay in Viola and Snow to please roll me a perception. 12. 11. Lower than my passive. 25. Stay in you look up from this piece of clay and from this half now crumbled pit, little grave it seems that she had been found in. Just as you're seeing the roots of this tree and all up along its bark is getting has gotten very dark. The mist around it seems to be just hovering all along it now, including that portion. You can no longer see the portion of that rope area, the knot that Viola had tied the rope to. But what's decidedly less comfortable is when you see the branches start wavering and there's not a breeze in sight. You don't feel it at all. And you barely have enough time to say anything and get out of the way as three of these branches creak and start moving and slam forward. Wait, is this the tree that Bo's tied to? Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> but he's tied Heck to yeah. the roots, not the limbs. Oh, you're right, because right. the, the roots yeah. couldn't do anything. They're just the thing <laughs> that gets the they're nutrients. They're not moving yet. <laughs> it's like the feed of to the whomping willow. It's, it's fine. the feed of the tree. <laughs> This is why I asked. Wait, is, uh, is Stan saying anything to... Uh, hold, so, sort of calls yes. out, and if she has time, she'll jump up and try to push Nora and Viola back away out of the branches. There's enough time to call out, and it seems From Nora the call can out. get oh, sorry. the memo. Mm -hmm. And she drops. But two of these branches, one goes swinging over her head, and two come aimed directly at Snow and Viola. Well, I was gonna ask is from the call out, would that give Bo enough time to cast Mage Armor? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna say no. Snow, 16 I, to your armor class. That'll hit. I will use cutting words to see if I can reduce that by the needed two. <laughs> Get away from me, you stupid plant. <laughs> Let's see. And that is three, which is any less than that, and it would still hit. But that um, reduces it to 13, and his AC is 14. 
<laughs> as if recoiling from the words and part of the branch goes, kind of curls as it's going over your head uh, instead of cracking against your chest. But you see it uh, kind of swinging over. The last one coming up to Viola, my dear, a... Now I'm wondering how it reacts to psychic 22 damage. to your armor class. <laughs> Why? 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 Every single time, even when a tree hits me, it's always over 20! Yes, that hits. Oh, does Every it now? Every single time! Golly. Oh, I am frustrated! Does she get yeeted into the pit? She's not! Oh, does she get yeeted into the pit? Because Bo's about to step out of that way. <laughs> well, she's Your head peeks up and Bile just... <laughs> but, I mean, if it's hitting her and she's facing it, she would probably just try to grab it. You were caught by surprise by it. So as it essentially yeets you into a pit. Oh, no. Wait, how high up is oh, this pit? God. It's about 30 feet 30 up. Feet. Oh, Bo didn't take Featherfall. I did. Oh, you did? I already used my reaction. Oh, you are right. <laughs> oh, yeah. You feel this thick branch crack against your chest. It's going to be 12 bludgeoning damage. It smashes into you, almost picks you up your, off your feet as you go tumbling. And an additional, oh golly, what did we start with? 12. 12. 16. Oh my gosh. Are you still up? As this thing launches you down, you fall past, Jeez. past poor Bo, crash into the ground. Bo is already on the ground, right? He wasn't Yeah, he was down, down there because he was looking okay. around. <laughs> right, okay. As you watch Viola, and, well, no, not your rope. Your rope is still up there. Yeah. Uh, you watch Viola start fall and then smack on the ground um, Can I make a convincing you. argument, though, that she was holding the rope? <laughs> that is tied to her surface. I said she let go. Why'd you let go of the rope? Viola's life is on the line here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, be fine. Not you, well, me. Well, I mean, he didn't know what was going on. The pit, he was just like, hold on to this rope before I go down in case I need to be pulled up real quick. She lets go of the rope. Well, <laughs> as soon as she got hit by a tree branch, yeah. it took 12 damage. Okay. <laughs> you got to like, grit your teeth. You got a chance to, like, grit your teeth, power me. through it. <laughs> if she hadn't been caught by surprise, she very well may have been able to grab hold of the branch or the rope or something like that. I mean, she's um, still alive for the moment. She's not for dead. For the moment. She's got her <laughs> second <laughs> wind. Moment. She's I was... lost three-fourths of her health. A number of things begin happening. This tree Wonderful. starts moving. The branches come swinging. Three of the four manage to duck out of the way. Viola is launched into this pit, falls smack near you, Bo. Bo, I need you to give me a a dexterity save. Real quick though, real mm -hmm. talk. So that carriage uh, ride that we had down here, was that enough for a short rest for him to get one HP back from the horse yes. fight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You never know when you need that one HP. I was just thinking, yes. if he gets a total of 32 damage and he falls, it's because of that horse. But I might make you, I might make you roll for infection. All right, you said dexterity save? Yes, please. Oh my gosh. Bo, do what you're supposed to do with your uh -oh. life. Um, okay, what's well, a save? So I can't use those. So that is a uh, 10. With okay. a plus six dexterity. <laughs> You see Viola smack into the ground. As you're starting to move, the ground around you, you can feel it squelching. And you look down and you see where some of those pockmarks were, not in the exact same area, but nearby and near, under your feet. The ground is not just damp, but it is now moist and then it is wet and slick as blood uh, pools up around your feet. Oh, who turned the um, blood on? He was checking for this. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see that even the, well, we'll get that in a moment. It's going to be three points of necrotic damage. And you can, it feels 
like it's it's only just on your shoes and it kind of splashed up a little bit maybe but it feels like it is clinging to you the blood kind of drips back down but you're watching it so viscous that it's just layering this sheen over your shoes and you feel like that has some kind of lingering uncomfortable effect potentially is um this happening to viola too because she's laying in it not yet it's not <laughs> by you yet how much do we want to like correlate blood with like water like how much water is in blood? <laughs> Those are two We're different liquids. <laughs> are we talking about amounts here? <laughs> talking about shape water. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> I already know. <laughs> I thought you were talking about something else entirely. My mistake for my mistake. Yeah, no, they're different. And as you guys are, so the the blood is pooling up down by Bo, Viola has completely lost her breath as she's dropped. And you also note, the two of you down there, that the the mist is also starting to kind of congeal a bit and get thicker around you. I won't have you roll for that just yet. What you also see, and now what all of you can see, is that not only are these branches swinging, but you hear the creaking and groaning as down at the base where these roots are, are also beginning to shift and move, pulling themselves up from the dirt as it's removing itself in enormous, this gargantuan form of this deadened tree. Dandy. As, as that's coming up, I told you a number of things are happening all at once. It's Nora rising. Nora starts coughing. <laughs> Nora is coughing for sure. She's big. <laughs> Nora's out. You hear, uh, what in, in the in-between of the groaning of these trees, you can also hear more noises in the dark distance. In this, because this whole area just has this, this, this cloudiness, this grayness. And it's these small sounds. And as they're getting closer, it sounds familiar as it becomes this kind of screechy mm. whine, this hissing. Begins. This slimy, these slimy little place sucks. Entities are coming near. I don't even you... remember why we wanted to come back here. <laughs> <laughs> For Helena's stuff. Oh yeah, that's Helena true. And that is on the wagon. Here. I said they they put it on the wagon before they went to them. So yep. Good. good <laughs> you thing. can just add that to your tab for Helena. She did this. What the four of you up top? So it'll be. Well, no, she's not up there anymore. I'm sorry. What the three of you up top? Viola got yeeted. Uh, Snow, Stan, and Nora. As you guys are getting away from this now moving tree, and you can see where these little creatures are coming from, you also see a figure behind them. Of course. Not cloaked. Not some arm you're expecting to see and... and Saying, you know, maybe you're hopeful for a moment that it's, you know, all in one shot. Perfect. It's the whoever did this to Klain. You're hopeful, but it's not. Thank goodness. As the form, the form becomes, it, it's almost familiar, but it's kind of walking slowly as it's approaching you. And through like pockets of light <laughs> in the tree. No, it's Cynthia, obviously. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> our Stop savior it. is here. Stop it. You're a hero. Or it's our pickpockets finally coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Time to take the rest of your gold. <laughs> but only your gold. <laughs> no, it's a familiar figure as uh, the light comes kind of spraying on it between these branches and through this darkness, uh, just a little bit of this light. And you see it's a feminine form. It looks like the clothing is this kind of torn traveling wear. And it does appear to be wearing a cloak of some kind, but you recognize a badge, one of the iron brooches holding it in place as it's sort of shambling towards you, the closer it gets, you can see in awful matted clumps, hair 
over the shoulder in this kind of torn and, and messy braid, gambling near you. Uh, the face becomes clearer, these white, deadened eyes, these sallow, sunken cheeks, the top of the hair, patches missing. She can't, she doesn't speak. She's just moaning. And you recognize the appearance of the guard that you had met before. It appears to be Ziva coming near you as she sees your presence is there. The shambling gets faster and faster as she approaches behind these creatures. Arm reached forward, clenched. Give me, uh, those who are up, stay in and snow, give me one quick perception check. Siva was one of the few NPCs that liked Bo. <laughs> 21, finally okay. above single digits. <laughs> okay. 30. Her arm that is lifted and reaching towards you. Viola would have recognized it, but she was yeeted in a pit. So what you guys see is the one kind of almost pristine looking thing on her is this bracelet on her arm. It has this little pendant on it that appears to be broken. And down her wrist, as if dripping from the pendant, sort of off-centered where the pendant is, and kind of dripping down, it looks like it's stained red. And that is where we're going to end tonight. Wait, we're not session. rolling initiative? No! Yeah. What? We'll wait. I mean, half no, the rolls we'll we're still waiting on here. No, we'll wait. Thank you from all of us here at Tales from the Catacombs. Catch up and recapture your favorite moments by subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate you guys journeying with us for almost an entire year to bring clean content to the world of tabletop RPGs. A particularly huge thanks to my players whose links are in the description below. Take a moment to follow these tremendous people because we love them and they're great. Uh, David, who plays Bo, Catherine, who plays Sayin, Cassie, who plays Viola, and Josh, who plays Snow. I'm Brenna. I am your storyteller for this adventure, and we will see you back here next time. Safe travels until we meet again.